Hi there. Welcome to Math 484 Linear Programming. My name is Wen Shen. I'm a professor of mathematics at Penn State University. In this very first video, we will go over several topics in Chapter 1, and mainly a brief introduction, and we'll take an example. Okay, let's go. First, let's be a little bit philosophical and take a look at the big picture to see how mathematics get into the problem-solving process. So let's say you have a real-world problem, that's your starting point, is here. And what do you do? Well, you wish to use mathematics to solve it. So one step involved here is called mathematical modeling. So based on the real world, you will define variables and so on and so forth, and you come up with a mathematical model. This could be equations, differential equations, and it can take various forms. And then you have a mathematical problem. And then you use your mathematical skill, you perform mathematical analysis and um, possibly develop algorithms to solve it. This could involve finding exact solutions or finding numerical methods to solve it. Once you have successfully done that, then you have a solution of the mathematical problem. It could be in terms of uh, some number, and uh, it could also be uh, data, which you can graph and you can see it. Once you are here, you would like to go back to the problem you started with. That's the real world problem. You would like to see some verification of your solution. You want to explain it back into the real world, what does your solution mean? Okay, so in this course, we will solve a specific type of real world problem. Our focus will be on the two parts that's highlighted here in red. We will learn how to set up a mathematical model from a real world that's described as a world problem. And then once this problem is set up, how can we find a solution? And we would develop mathematical theory, analysis and algorithms, and so on and so forth. Okay, exactly for what type of problem we will be studying? Well, let's go to the next slide. Okay, now we um, take an example on um, modeling we will look at a problem probably we have all thought about. We call it the simplified diet problem. Okay? So the setting of the problem is the following. So we need to eat food every day. And the food has nutrients. For us to survive and stay healthy, we need to have somewhat balanced nutrients. Okay? So the goal is the following. We want to minimize the cost of the food. And at the same time, the daily requirement of the nutrients must be met. Okay. So in the setting of this simplified problem, we just as an example, we choose um, five different types of food. Um, apples, bananas, carrots, dates, and eggs. So they conveniently start with the letters A, B, C, D, and E. And these will be the letters we will be using for the variables as well. So we know um, there is a broad spectrum of nutrients that we humans need. To simplify the discussion, let's focus on three types of nutrients namely protein, vitamin C, and iron, okay, for this example. 
assuming now these are the only three ones that matters for this problem. It is always useful to list your information in a tabular form. So we have this table. And let's take a look at it, what it means. So we listed in the columns different things. So the first column here are the different types of food that we list. And the second column are units. These are only for us to interpret um, the real world problem. And then the third column is um, the amount of protein this food would have per unit. Okay, that's measured in gram. And then the next is vitamin C. This is milligram of vitamin C per unit of the food. So, if, for example, the six here means um, one unit of apple, that's one medium sized apple will have six milligram of vitamin C. And then one medium banana will have 10 milligram vitamin C. Okay? So these, etc., etc., in the same way. And then we notice that for the egg, um, it doesn't have vitamin C. And the next column is the iron. The nutrition value of the iron in all these five different food we are going to eat. Okay, so these are the three nutrients. And then, um, and uh, we see that in the last column it's listed the price for each of these fruit. The price is cent per unit. So um, for a medium apple, it costs eight cents, a medium banana, ten cents, one medium carrot, three cents, and half cup of dates, twenty cents, and two medium eggs, fifteen cents. And then, um, in order to live um, in a healthy way, um, you need to have some minimum um, intake of all the three types of nutrients. So this information is listed in the last row, which we called minimum row. So for every day, you should take at least 70 gram of protein, 50 milligram of vitamin C, and 12 milligram of iron in your diet to stay healthy. Okay, we can um, take a pause the video and Take a look at these data, okay? Then we'll continue. Now, in order to set up a mathematical problem, we first introduce some variables. So, as we said earlier, the five groups of food starts with the letters A, B, C, D, E, and these are the variables we'll be using. This would be units of apple, this A here, units of apple you intake daily, and units of banana you will intake daily, and C is the unit of uh, carrots you would intake daily, and so on and so forth. With these given, according to the information of the table above, we can calculate something we called a cost function. That is, if I consume A units of apple, B units of banana, C units of carrots, and so on and so forth. That's what I take every day. How much will it cost me? Well, then you should go look into the last column here. There is the price given. So for A units of apple, you will pay 8 times A cents, right? And then for the banana, the unit price is 10 cents, so it's 10 times B, and the carrots is 3 cents, and it gives you 3 times C, and this gives you 20 for the dates, 20 times D, and for the egg will be 15 times E. And you add all them up, and that gives you the total price 
you have to pay and we call this the then our goal is to minimize the cost function. So we can see that if we chose all A, B, C, D, E to be zero, the cost will be zero. But that's not a smart choice because then you'll be starving. So note that the last row of the table has some constraints for the problem. That is, there is a minimum of the intake of these three groups of nutrients. And we must choose a solution, A, B, C, D, E, such that the minimum nutritional requirements are met. Let's take a look at protein. So if we take A units of apple, how much protein would we have? Well, that's 0 0.4 times A which is listed here. And then B units of banana will give us 1.2 times B amount of protein. And uh, for carrots is 0 0.6 times C. And for date is 0 0.6 times D. And for the eggs is 12.2 times E. If we add all of them up, this will give us the total amount of protein that I would have on that day. And the minimum requirement says that this shall be bigger than or equal to 70. So this becomes a constraint to our um, minimization problem. So similarly, we will have another constraint if we consider our intake of vitamin C. So we'll do a similar computation, multiply 6 with A, and 10 with B, and 3 with C, and 1 times D, that give us the total vitamin C intake, and this shall be bigger than or equal to 50. So this is our second constraint. The third constraint is totally similar, considering the intake of iron, you just take the unit amount of the nutrients and multiply them by the corresponding variable and then you add them all up exactly in the same way as we did for the first two constraints. So this sum here becomes the total amount of iron we would have and that shall be bigger than equal to 12. Now, at last, but not least, there is an important constraint here. Here, the variables A, B, C, D, E that we have defined, they are um, the amount of food that you take. So, they cannot be negative. So, they're all positive variables. So, we have a further constraint, that is, A, B, C, D, E shall all be non-negative. And then we see that we have listed all the constraints that this model requires us to do. Okay, we can now summarize. This is basically repeating what we have just said. So now we have a mathematical problem. We have a function, f, depends on variable a, b, c, d, e, which is defined like this. We call it the cost function. But we, we can just say the goal now is to find the minimum value of this function here by choosing a, b, c, d, e in a smart way. But then we have constraints, and then we list all the constraints. And and we usually put a star, say that's all the constraints. And then you see that I basically listed the one for three different nutrients and the positivity constraint on the variables. Okay, so congratulations. And uh, you have just set up your first linear programming model. 
Now, I would like to put in the remark, as you probably are thinking that the real problem say this diet problem could actually include more food types and more nutrient types you can do that this would just lead to a more complicated mathematical problem then you have more variables to put here and you have more terms here and you have more constraints here okay but the basic underlying modeling principle remains the same Okay, so here is an assignment for textbook reading. Um, in chapter 1.3 in the textbook, there is another famous model, and it's called The Prisoner's Dilemma, and it's quite fun. I recommend you to read through it. Okay, so that's it for chapter 1, and then you can continue watching videos for chapter 2 now.